Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at what is negative feedback, the mechanism of negative feedback, the coordinated response, positive feedback, and then we'll finish with the summary. So negative feedback is a process that we see a lot of times in the body. We've talked about how organisms need to maintain their internal environment, and this process is known as homeostasis. And it applies to many factors in our environment inside the body. This can be pH, which must be maintained at about 7.35, we need to maintain our temperature so that it's not too hot or too cold. And we also have to make sure we maintain water potential so that the blood and the tissues around us have the right level of water. So how do we control these to be a constant value? Well, it's done through having an optimum point for things like pH and water potential and temperature. So an optimum point basically refers to the point at which these things are at their best value. So for example, temperature, the body temperature is around 37.5 degrees Celsius and we have to try and keep it around this value so that all of the proteins and processes that we have work as efficiently as possible. So we call this value the optimum. We also have an optimum pH and an optimum water potential too. So if there's ever a change away from this set optimum point, the body needs to realise this and the internal environment needs to return back to the optimum point. So say, for example, we suddenly enter an environment which has a lot more sunshine or the temperature outside is hotter. The temperature inside the body is going to start going up. So we're now deviating away from the optimum. This can also happen in the opposite direction. For example, if we entered a colder area where the temperature inside would drop. Either way, we're deviating from the 37.5 value. If we increase the temperature, say if we started doing exercise or say if we were in a desert or something, then the control mechanisms found in various parts of the body work to lower the temperature back down to the optimum. For example, by sweating, certain behavioral changes like what we might wear as clothes, and other mechanisms, when they detect that the temperature has gone up, we need to bring it back down again to keep it to the optimum level. So the mechanism which reverses the change in the internal condition is called negative feedback. So negative feedback is the body's mechanism for reversing a change so that it returns back to the optimum. So whether that optimum temperature was made to be too high or too low, whatever the body does, it needs to reverse the change so that it goes back in the opposite direction, back to the optimum. So how does this work? How does negative feedback work in the body? Well, the optimum point for the body is being continuously monitored by receptors throughout the body for various things. We have lots of different types of receptors and we have lots of different types of stimuli that are being recepted or received. And the information gathered by the receptors is monitoring whether we're sticking to that optimum value or not. So whenever the receptor starts detecting any change away from the optimum, they need to send signals to our coordinators. So for example, we may have receptors for temperature, and these receptors will basically detect any change away from that optimum temperature, so an increase or a decrease. And it needs to send signals to a coordinator so that it is told what's changing. So certain signals will be sent away from the receptor to the coordinators. The coordinator is what then decides which response is appropriate to respond to this change and it carries it out by sending signals to effectors. So the overall picture is we have our receptors detecting a change. These then signal to the coordinators, which we'll talk about more later on. So various signals are sent out. The coordinators process the change and they decide what we need to do in order to reverse this change. And then they send out their own different signals to effectors. And then the effectors, once they've received these signals, they bring about the change which returns the internal conditions back to the optimum. So the signals that came from the coordinators arrived at the effectors and the effectors carry out a specific action to reverse the change. And that's how negative feedback works as a mechanism. And these effectors can usually be classed as either muscles or glands, which release hormones. So when you think about all of the different signals that the body's responding to, the coordinators which decide our behaviour receive signals from many different places. So in order to act effectively and keep on top of everything, they have to analyse the signals before they can choose to make a response. So signals can be, for example, coming from various different receptors, they can be covering different types of stimuli, 
and all of this has to be analysed before the affecting signals are sent out. One example to illustrate this is with temperature again. So there are temperature receptors in both the skin on our body and in the hypothalamus. So some temperature receptors are found on our skin, for example on our arm, and in the hypothalamus which is deep in the brain. So if we started exercising or doing something vigorous, we start to sweat and this reduces the temperature of the skin. So when we begin exercising, the sweating mechanism begins and the water as it evaporates lowers the temperature of the skin. If the coordinator received the information from the skin receptors and only used the information from the skin, it would start to act to increase the temperature of the body when we exercise. Because what's happening is, as we're sweating, the skin temperature is dropping, and if the receptors going to the coordinators sent the signal that it's a decreasing temperature, and the coordinators only acted on this, then the coordinator would think that we're losing heat, so the body temperature would be thought to be cold. And so its response is going to be to increase our temperature. But this is obviously wrong, because we're exercising, and the point is we're sweating to try and cool down. So instead, to be safer, the coordinator uses information from the hypothalamus temperature receptors as well to make sure that the response is appropriate. So what it's really doing is it's taking the temperature information from the skin, but it's also taking the temperature information from the hypothalamus too. And the hypothalamus knows that the blood is very warm and it knows that we're exercising and the reason that we're sweating in the first place is because we need to cool down. So then it realises the appropriate response is not to keep increasing our temperature, it's actually to bring it down. So the point here is it uses a variety of receptors and sources to work out the best response rather than just basing it on one side of the information. We also have a process called positive feedback. So positive feedback is basically the opposite of negative feedback. Any change away from a set point or an optimum is actually reinforced or increased. So this time, if we look at a similar graph, and if we said, for example, this was again temperature, if there was a deviation away from the optimum, then negative feedback would usually bring it back down again, but positive feedback actually encourages it to keep going. So this is the opposite of negative feedback. And this mechanism brings about a large, unstable change in the body. So as you can imagine, if the temperature keeps going up, it's going to be very large change a very unstable change and it's going to keep going too. And in most cases this would be very harmful. If we kept increasing or decreasing our temperature we'd probably die, but there are some examples of where it can be useful. For example in action potentials in the neurons. Remember the neurons, or nerve cells, need to be able to send electrical impulses along the length of their axon for communication. And without going into too much detail, these action potentials rely on partly some positive feedback in order to work. During the action potential, there is an influx or an entry of sodium ions, causing a depolarization stage in the cell. When they do this, it results in more of the voltage-gated sodium channels opening, and it reinforces the sodium to keep entering. During the action potential, we have to depolarize and keep raising the membrane potential. So as sodium ions enter one channel and cause depolarization, this then triggers the next channel to open, allowing more ions to enter, and more and more, until there's a chain of sodium ions entering. And that membrane potential keeps increasing. And it's increasing away from a set point that it was at before at rest, but this is important and useful for setting up the action potential. So as you can see on a graph here, we've got time versus the membrane potential. We've got a kind of optimum ideal for depolarization but actually we encourage it to keep going so that we can get a maximum action potential signal so that this can allow communication. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.